Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Rep PR 5000 V2. I'm gonna walk you through it, talk about what I got, why I got it, and also some insight and some things that I found or some things that you might want to be aware of if you're considering purchasing this rack. I don't wanna lead you one way or the other telling you you need to buy or avoid this in particular because that's really gonna depend on you, what your budget is, what's available at the time of your purchase, and also where some of your loyalties lie in terms of if you're going to get an imported rack or one that's made in the USA, as well as the overall ecosystem, which I will say is a lot different with racks like this being that they're mostly three by three with one inch hardware, meaning a lot of times you can adapt or with a little bit of effort, you can adapt and bring in other companies' equipment onto this particular rack or have this rack's attachments on other stuff as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about my Rep PR 5000 V2, in this case, in the nice raw clear grind. All right, so let's start with the uprights themselves. These ones are listed as three by three. They're 92 inches tall. In reality, they're a little bit less than three inches. So if you're looking at certain attachments to bring in outside of maybe ones made by rep, just know they might fit a little bit loose on here. And same thing going with rep attachments on another rack, you might find they're a little bit tight. I've talked about that in a few other videos already, but for the most part, it's an upright, right? It's generally three by three with one inch hardware. These, I do have laser cut numbers on them, which is a really nice touch. They actually have the rep logo cut out right here, which I think is a nice touch. I'm not sure if I love it because you end up losing one of the whole spaces here, but that's just one of the things that, are you really gonna use a hole there or not? Maybe, maybe not. It does look nice, but it kind of loses a little bit of its functionality. Now, when it comes to the uprights themselves, otherwise, I mean, there's not much you can say. There is a wide range of colors that you can pick from. I went with the clear grind and I think it looks awesome. I will say, I think this is one of the most expensive finishes, if not the most expensive finish they offer. I don't believe they currently have a stainless steel option, but I do think it's well worth the money to upgrade if this is a look that you're interested in. In a minute, we'll take a look at the cross member and nameplate, and I think this one actually matches that the best since that is also like a silver color. Um, but overall, this clear grind finish is really nice and it's held up extremely well. It doesn't show the normal wear and tear as much as my white rogue rack does. Although there are a couple of instances where I can see that clear finish kind of chipping and peeling off, but it's not that darker color or that rubbing color you get from a lot of the UHMW. So it's harder to see, but it is there. But overall, the finish here looks fantastic. And the upright is just that it's an upright. There's not much else to say. All right, so let's talk about the cross members next. And for the most part, they're the same high quality that you'll find from the uprights offered in all the same colors. They have the laser cut numbers as well. They're really nice. And even though I opted to get the clear grind all around this rack, one of the things you'll notice is when you order other racks online and you're choosing a rack color, you only have one option. So you get a red rack or a blue rack or a black rack. With rep, they actually ask you for the color preferences on pretty much every piece of equipment. So if you're a really big Superman fan, for example, if you want to get blue uprights with red cross members, you could do that. If you want to get really freaky and match any other color, you could also do that. This also means that if you're having trouble getting stuff that's in stock, and maybe they don't have the matching uprights and cross members that you would need, you can really pick whatever's in stock and still just put it all together. And you can do so without having to talk to customer service or putting in a special order request. So you can get pretty neat when it comes to customization, or if you're in a need, you can just get whatever's available and just bolt it together. Another thing I wanna talk about is the actual size and depth of the cross members as well. So for this particular unit, I have a 30 inch usable area here, the same as my Rogue RM3, which for me, I find is the perfect depth. People always ask me, you know, should I go 30 inches or a little bit over 40? What do you think? You've had both. For me, I think 30 is the best. Uh, the rack I recommend for most people is actually 24 inches in depth. I know people get claustrophobic in that amount. 43 or 42 for me, I think just, just too much space. There's not much you can do in that size rack that you can't do in a 30 inch rack. And since most people are training at home and space is of the utmost importance, I think the 30 inch depth is prime time of really what you wanna do. Now the back section I have here for plate storage is actually a 16 inch depth. They have two different options here, 16 or 24, whereas most other manufacturers that I've seen only offer in a 24 without potentially having to pay extra to cut. And the reason I like this setup is I've mentioned the 30 inch depth I think is perfect. I also think 16 inch is perfect here. It's not like a rogue setup where you need 24 inches if you're going to put, let's say, a, a rhino mounted in the rack. 16 inches is plenty of room for clearance for the plates to squeeze between if you need to. And again, it shrinks that overall footprint. 
So just for example, this six post rack, this PR5000 V2 that I have from front post to back post takes up 55 inches total on the floor, which is fantastic because when you look at the Rogue RM6, which is their six post offering, that takes up, I think, 76 inches. So you're talking about basically a savings of nearly two feet of space, which is quite significant when you're talking about, again, home gym and square footage and footprint being of the utmost importance. So I really like this, but again, you can mix and match. And if you want a deeper area here, you can do that. The other depth that they offer is 42 inches. So a little bit different than Rogue. Or if you want a 24 inch back section for this, you can do that, but you don't even have to get a back section as is, of course, if you don't want to. All right, so let's talk about the nameplate here next. And it's overall, it's pretty nice, right? I told you already, it matches the rack really well. I think the downside here is that they don't color match to other racks or give you the option to change some of this around. At least like with the Rogue, for example, the centerpiece is always black, but they'll change the nameplate color to whatever color rack you get. And I get it, that rep has a lot of options, but I'd like to see that be able to be changed fairly easy. I think part of the problem is probably since they're importing from overseas, everything is boxed up and done over there, and they probably don't wanna rip stuff out or have a ton of extra nameplates on order necessarily, but I do think it's a nice touch that goes a long way. So if they can figure out a way to let you customize this in terms of color, or even offer services in-house where they can make custom archway nameplates, I think that would be a big benefit. Now, one of the things that's kind of a downside of this that I'd like to mention is even though this matches really well, this thing tends to be more of a fingerprint magnet because it's pretty shiny and glossy in that regard. Uh, another thing is, is this laser cut stuff, while it looks nice, and while you're probably not gonna ever be up here, but all this stuff is super sharp and it will cut your fingers if you do that. I'll kind of talk about that on the J cups when I show you that as well. But I think the biggest downside of this type of design is the nameplates only on one side, which Normally wouldn't be a problem because right, this is against the back wall and whatnot. So it's blank on the other side. The problem is when you take a look at the cross member up top, the top holes and the bottom holes are behind this. So if you wanted to mount something like a carabiner or some other attachment that might be coming out that might have to come through and down this way, let's say like a, a different kind of cable system. And I'll talk about this lap pull down in just a second. You can't do that because this nameplate is going to block it and the holes are on the rear side. So I'd like to see this actual archway be kind of mounted to the back side of this archway so you can easily access those top and bottom holes from this side of the rack. Now on the front side of the rack, I got this globe crown pull-up bar attachment. I don't really like it for the most part. I got it because I wanted something different. And while these are good novel idea, I just don't like the implementation of this. I wish there was a way where maybe they could think of or have a cross member that connected the front together that had mounting holes, similar to what they've done with the nameplate and archway before, but just drop the actual nameplate. And then that way they could just have something bolt on because they do have a bolt on version of this particular pull up bar, but it's supposed to bolt onto the side of the rack, which I don't really like. Now, of course there are other pull up bar options that they offer, but again, it all kind of mounts in this weird way and they don't have that front closing cross member that I'm a big fan of that I've done videos on in the past. And another downside about this particular one that I have, which you can kind of see is when you have these ISO arms, the actual pull-up bar itself is kind of limited by where the ISO arms can go up and down. So you can't get this fully up necessarily, or if you wanna take a really wide grip, you're going to have to lower the ISO arms. It's kind of a pain in the ass and we'll talk about next. All right, so moving on to the ISO arms themselves, this is something that I was really excited to get in because I hadn't owned any before. And I gotta say, I have mixed feelings on these. I think they can be pretty beneficial to someone who's looking to really kind of add to the versatility of their home gym without taking up a ton more space because there's a lot of things you can do with these. There's a lot of ways that you can set these up to emulate some of the machines that you might be more familiar with in a gym, like a chest press or a shoulder press type machine. Of course, you can do stuff where you're actually being more explosive and whatnot, but some of that's going to be limited by what you have available in terms of your footprint and also your height of your ceilings because these things can get up pretty high. Now, one of the reasons why I said I have mixed feelings is even because I do think these can be pretty versatile, these ones in particular are also very affordable at around 400 bucks when they're in stock. The biggest downside to me is the fact that even though these are adjustable, it's such a pain in the ass to actually adjust them that I don't find myself using them because I don't want to have to adjust them. In fact, I don't even think that my wife, when she comes down here to train, she would be able to use these because I don't think she'd be able to move these by herself. I'd have to come down and help her. And again, it just makes the actual user experience so bad in my opinion that I just don't find myself using these that often. 
Now on the other end of the spectrum, something I use this rack for all the time is the lap pull down low row feature. This attachment that it has on the back is fantastic. It's by far my favorite part of the rack. Now, to be honest, anything I can do on this rack otherwise, you know, like bench press, squatting, that kind of stuff, lifting in the rack, I can do on my other rack I have or any other rack out there. But one of the things I can't do on anything else that I own here is really have a true lat down low pull experience like I can on this attachment. So it's great. Again, my favorite part of the rack and I find myself using it all the time and finding ways to integrate it into my training. Now, one of the reasons I like this so much more than let's say like the Rogue Slinger that I have is because it mounts in a way to the rack that number one, doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not a pain in the butt to set up and use, and it's super effective and efficient. In fact, the way I have it here, using leg rollers to weigh yourself down or lock yourself in is great. And again, it's easily loadable because it's right near where the actual weight plates are. So just putting weights on the weight horns is a simple, super easy process. And you have a real feeling of weight instead of having to use bands or setting up something externally like you would on the Rogue Slinger. So high row, low pull attachment, fantastic, and one of the best reasons to own this particular rack. All right, so let's talk J-Cups really quick. I have two different versions here. I have the flat sandwich ones, and I also have what I would consider the standard J-Cups. I believe there's a round sandwich ones as well. Uh, for the most part, I really like these particular ones. The biggest downfall I've had was the initial UHMW I had on here compressed. I made a video about that. These are actually the replacement ones that they just sent me the other day. They seem to have fixed that issue. And I really like these and probably would recommend these if you're looking at any J-Cups for your PR5000 V2. Now the standard ones, which are typically what come free with most racks or the least expensive, I don't really like these based off of, again, some potential issues that I believe Rep is fixing or has fixed, but when I got mine, they just hadn't been fixed at that point or they weren't aware of the issue. So number one, this uses the same compressible UHMW that was on this particular cup. The good news here is at least there's a lip, so it's not gonna press in at all any really. It might get the screws a little bit over time. But my biggest issue with these is the screws themselves. And I'll try to show you some close-up videos. It's only mounted each piece by a single screw, which means these things rotate and can move kind of frequently. And again, because they're using that softer UHMW, I can literally just pry these things right off with my fingers, which is not something I would like to see with a safety device. So we also have these slip down safeties here and I like these a lot. I've made a video on them already, but again, it has some nice steel here, UHMW lined on the inside, laser cut numbers as well. As you can tell from this thing, I have those leg rollers mounted here to kind of brace me for lap pull downs. Uh, I like these things a lot. And one of the things I really like about them is the fact that I could never get these for my Rogue RM3. Rogue does not sell a 30 inch version of the flip down safety, Rep does. And again, these are can be potentially a great option for you and your safety needs. Now talking about safety needs, there are also the strap safeties, which for the most part, I love strap safeties. I made a video on them in the past, but Rep recently had an issue with their strap safeties where a couple people had them fail. They went out and replaced them. It was like a J cup issue with the welding and stuff. And even though that mine don't have that problem, I did that drop test on here. What I really don't like about the rep version here is how much slack is in this actual safety. And this can mean that when you're setting up for a bench, especially in something like a 30 inch depth rack here, you have to have one side really low, the other side fairly high. It's hard to get that perfect height. And I just think there's too much overall slack in them where I find myself instead using the flip down safeties. All right, so I also have the dip attachment from them and it's your Pretty standard design, has UHMW on the inside, it has a pin on there to lock it in. One of the things that was different about this was the fact that it shipped disassembled and you actually have to bolt both of these arms on. I don't have anything negative or positive to say about it, just that it's a dip attachment and it works. All right, so I also have the safety spotter arms for lifting outside the rack in conjunction with the half rack feet as well. Half rack feet for me on my 30 inch depth Rogue RM3 have been great because it prevents the rack from tipping. Not really necessary on this rack for that issue for tipping wise since I have six posts, I have the plate storage, I have the lat pull down attachment. This thing is heavy, it's not going anywhere. But this could potentially be a good option for someone who wants to have more than one training station. So you could have someone benching or squatting outside the rack and also doing some lifting inside the rack. So if you have a training partner or a spouse or someone else training with you, uh, this might be a potentially good option. I will say that these are pretty high quality. In fact, you know, they have the laser cut numbers on these as well. They match up well with the safety feet on the bottom. If you wanna do band work, things of that nature, add other attachments in here. 
You could actually use the jammer arms as a mono lift and do some benching outside of the rack as well again. So a lot of options here. These tend to be a little bit more affordable than some of the other companies out here. So potentially a good option, but not really necessary for the rack itself, especially if you have a six post version. Now, what I'm not gonna show you attached to the rack is the belt squat attachment. And this is one of the things that's really been the biggest disappointment for me. And it's probably that way because it was the thing I was most looking forward to. Rep Fitness has a belt squat attachment that looked like a great way to do belt squats at a very small cost and very small footprint as opposed to buying something like a Rogue Rhino or a dedicated belt squat machine. However, I can say that after using it for a couple of weeks, I find that number one, didn't really give me that feeling I was looking for. And number two, again, setting it up and using it was the biggest pain in the butt. Didn't seem to fit in my rack well, the holes didn't line up really good. Setting it up, taking it down, and also making sure that I hit depth was something that was just not a great user experience. And that's probably why it's been relegated to just a wall in my gym and it just sits there collecting dust because it's not worth the hassle, nor do I find it to be a very effective movement. So it had a lot of promise I thought but just something that I was really let down on and I'll do a dedicated review kind of showing you all that stuff in depth at some point. So there you go that's the Rep PR 5000 V2 an overall good rack at a very good price. In fact if you're just considering uprights and cross members and comparing apples to apples to other competitors out there I think Rep's going to come in a couple hundred dollars less expensive for a very similar experience. Now, I noted already that they're also very modular so you can get colors and custom things like a 30 inch depth rack with a 16 inch extension which gives you a much smaller footprint than any other six post rack out there. All good things. The downside is to that modularity and ordering is their website and it's very hard to put together an idea of how much the rack you would want would cost when things aren't in stock and they don't allow you to build them out accordingly. So a little bit of a pro and con there. But at the end of the day, if you're considering them for a rack, I would highly suggest it. Where I think they could really improve is in their ecosystem and attachment games. I think they've really been putting a lot of effort into this, which is nice to see. But I think part of the problem is, is it's just not up to par with what's out there from a competition standpoint. And you'll note from this video, a lot of the issues or room for improvements that I mentioned were all in regards to the attachments that they offer. Now, the upside to this is because it's a three by three rack with one inch hardware, you could take Rogue or Sorenex or other equipment manufacturing stuff and put it onto this rack. But because Rep actually uses a slightly smaller tubing than three by three, those things are gonna be just a little bit looser, or might not give you the right fitment that you're looking for. So I really like to see Rep go ahead and update either their racks to be true three by three or denote that on their website because that's not the only inconsistency that I've seen with some of their measurements and specs. But again, end of the day, a good rack at a good price for a lot of people out there, assuming it's in stock. If you're interested in finding out more about them, I will link it in the description box below. If you have other questions about the rack itself or some of the attachments specifically that I have yet to do a video on, leave those in the comments down below as well and I'll get to them when I can. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.